just ask the same questions every week. How's your job? Are you having any negative thoughts? All I have are negative thoughts. What's up all you movie lovers out there? Welcome back to yet another unscripted from r and Reviews. You are here today with Big Joe and Little Nick. Shabby, shabby. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Today we're going to talk about the most highly rated review that we've put out this year. And no, it is not just because we are superhero junkies, all right? That is not the reason. This movie is solid. Even if you're not a, a lover of what this genre is, you can love this movie. And it is played by some of the most talented actors. And what we didn't know is possibly a very talented director at the same time, writer, so forth. It's the one, the only, Joker. <laughs> Welcome to the cinema. R&R. R&R movies. It's the standalone DCU film, because it's not in the DCEU, that is separate from the universe, based in the most realism we have ever seen in a superhero film yet. Alert! If you haven't seen this movie, don't listen to this, because we're going to talk about a lot of spoilers. A lot of them. Yeah, and let's be honest here. We all kind of knew the plot of the movie going in. It's basically about a man losing his mind in the end. A man that struggles with mental illness, but he becomes the Joker. So, But the detail and facts that we're going to share do kind of take out the mystery. Right, which is what makes this movie so good through some of it. As you can hear on our Facebook page or our YouTube page, we gave Joker a 9 out of 10 points. Once again, what we'd like to state, that is the highest rating we've ever given a movie. Yes, that is the highest rating. Higher than Avengers Endgame. And yes, I know also another superhero movie. But this movie breaks the mold of what it means to be a part of the comic book genre. It's really so unlike a superhero movie I mean, you can't really compare them at all to anything that's in the MCU. Yeah, or any other depiction of the Joker prior to this moment. I mean, any depiction that you have doesn't even, you know, stand hand to hand with what this is. This is so different. It's out of the box. It just, it breaks, it breaks the precedent. And this film stars Jack Nicholson, and he falls in a vat of acid. And um, it kind of freezes his face in a smile position, you know? So he's always yeah, no, smiling. Yeah, no, 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 try again, try again. And then he had a... Now you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. Tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? No, this, you're wrong. This film, in fact, stars Jared Leto. And uh, he does fall into a vat of acid, but it's after he's the Joker and it's with his girlfriend. Right, and he probably puts down the best performance as a Joker ever. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Anyway. Moving on. <laughs> Back to Joaquin and his very talented performance, as we stated. Not like anything you've ever seen before. Todd Phillips deserves mad credit for writing and directing this film. You know, we know him from nothing but basically comedy movies prior to this, The Hangover, Due Date, a few others. But this this really does take a step up. This won, the, I believe it was the Vice Film Festival, top award for the movie, possibly going to be nominated for Oscar. I definitely think and it's it really, Oscar-worthy. It really sheds a light on mental illness. It's like it has this deeper story where it's like revealing and talking about these people that feel like they are pushed to the margins of society and that no one cares. Right, I think it does a really good job of showing that the plot to this, the whole storyline is fantastic. I know we're probably going to start getting into that right now, so I just want to note real quick also, uh, score and soundtrack on this movie is excellent. Usually when you get a movie, you get a movie that's um, either really heavy on score and hardly any soundtrack, or it's a lot of soundtrack and not very prominent score. This movie is perfect at blending them together. It's got this perfect just relationship going on between both of them where the soundtrack's here the whole time but then when you hear the score oh man you just feel it you're like uh you feel the craziness the madness the joker yes and the the cinematography in the film gives this gray dull tone it sets it in an era like we're talking late 70s uh early 80s somewhere in there 
and it just feels gritty and it feels dark. The city at that time is, I guess the trash department of the city is on strike, so no one's collecting trash, so there's trash everywhere. And it's just, it, it's so interesting to watch this, this play out. It really is just like Taxi Driver too. It really does. Have you ever seen Taxi Driver? I have not, unfortunately. It's basically just like this. A lot of people wouldn't like it because it, it, it feels slow, but what it really is is that he's just developing this character through this story. He's like, you're watching this very realistic unraveling of someone. It's like that view of the world seems like a dirty, a bad place, and you can't overcome it, so you, you know, you become that. What encompasses my opinion of it completely is, is about halfway through the film, I was like, I was like, this is all right. I was like, but there's no way by the end of it I'm going to be like, wow, that was incredible. And then at the end of it, right before like the last 10 minutes when the movie really comes full circle, I was just like, wow. And I just sat there for the rest of the movie with the biggest smile on my face because I was like, they did it. They did it. It, it was great. And I just loved the whole, it comes full circle and it, it was awesome the way they did it. Probably my favorite scene was the very ending scene. Uh, where he's talking to the therapist, talking about a joke that that she's not going to get. And then he's walking out of the room and there's, you know, f blood prints on his feet in there. And then he starts running back and forth and they're chasing him. And that's when you really see. Because the thing is, you don't see the Joker until like the very end of the movie. Mm -hmm. You know, because he's this development. I mean, that's the whole movie is character. This character is his development. That's, that's it. I love how much mystery the movie was shrouded in. Because that's the, the thing that's amazing about the Joker is you never, like, know his actual story. And even though this movie told, like, his actual story, there's still a lot it didn't confirm. Like, with the, the lady that is played by, is it Zazzy Beats? That you think he's dating throughout the movie, and then you find out, oh, that was all a figment of his imagination. Whenever he shows up in her apartment that night, he doesn't show what he does. You don't know what he did. You don't know if he just left. You don't know if he murdered her. You don't know if he murdered her and her daughter. You have no idea, no clue. And the same with, like, the whole storyline that he might be Thomas Wayne's son. It never confirms nor denies it all the way. It kind of leads you to think that, no, it, his mom was just crazy, but then you see a picture at the end of his mom that says, I love your smile from Thomas Wayne. So you're still like, I have no clue. <laughs> it could really yes, go either way. There's no definition to it. You know, that's one thing that's different about this is I think when we look at the Joker in previous adaptations, he's kind of like, he's not really humanized, so we don't really, you know, we look at him as this supervillain that's not realistic or real, but this movie humanizes him and makes him so, it, because we have this backstory, it adds the storyline to it, and when it does that, it shows us a different side of him. It's it, I mean, it, it nails it on the head. It's, it's great, it's super realistic. I'm impressed. It definitely puts a better taste in my mouth than after I saw Suicide Squad. Right, right, for sure is way better than that. I remember like watching the movie, and you know I was paying it. I was paying attention really close, and because I thought it was just going to be the Descent of Madness the whole time. I didn't expect like any violence or anything like that. But when he got attacked on the train and he kills all of them, mm -hmm. I totally didn't see any of that coming. And from that point on in the movie, I was just fully locked in. It is interesting when he goes like zero to a hundred like that and then when his old work uh, co-workers show up at his house right and then and then he lets the little guy go and i i didn't think that was going to happen either i thought but he that's was playing that was him. part of it that was great because the whole time you're like oh my god oh my god i don't know what's going to happen i don't know what he's going to do he's crazy <laughs> right. i don't know what he's going to do right and he knew he couldn't open the door because he locked it right and a uh, little guy couldn't reach it right and he was like you're the only one that was nice to me and that made me love it so much better because it just shows how crazy he is that he was like ah you're fine you can go even though you might get, call the cops and ruin me getting to go on the show tonight yeah well I don't I think at that point he knew he wasn't going to be coming back and so I think that was part of why he you know because he probably just left his apartment like it was he was ending his touch with the person that he was I think that that scene too as well is definitely the best rendition of Joker makeup I've ever seen. It was all white. There was nothing in it but all white, which is how it should be. And it looks so creepy. Now I hated the look at first for his like final Joker, but in the end of it I was like, okay, I kind of dig this. But that all white face too, I mean, it's freaky. 
Yeah, I mean, he's definitely got that creepy vibe to him in that. But, again, it, it focuses on the realism of it. It's the realist, the most realistic interpretation of his makeup of every portion of the character. Even his suit wasn't purple. It was like a, like a burgundy with, like, orange. Mm-hmm. The only thing I did think about was, how old would you say he was in this film? Well, the first comment I made at the end of it was like, um, I was like, so that means that when Batman grows up, um, he's going to be fighting a 70-year-old Joker. <laughs> That's what I thought, too, because, like, Batman was, I mean, sure, maybe he starts young, but, like, the Batman we know is in, like, his 30s. Like, well, maybe. I'm pretty know, sure he trains 20s. with the league for, like, 10, 20 years or something like that before he even comes back, so. <laughs> yeah, so, that that is a little bit, I wish, I almost kind of wish they wouldn't have actually shown. The only, I, I at the end, I was okay with that. Which also I thought was cool. It kind of rewrote its story because this was uh, the only credit that Tom Phillip, Todd Phillips gave uh, to something to give him inspiration was the killing joke. So it does have some right. aspects like the comedian portion. And you know, Arthur he was a failed Davis comedian. Man. What I found interesting about the killing point at the end was in the, you go back to 1989 Batman with Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson was the one that killed his parents in an alley. Mm-hmm. And that storyline wasn't even the original storyline at that point, I don't think. Right, Joe, Unless it was maybe in a comic book. Joe Chill's always been the one that murdered Batman's parents, and he wasn't a, a clown or anything. Yes, exactly. So, But then in this one, it was a clown that murdered his parents, which almost kind of is an Easter egg or kind of a callback to that. Right. Um, I saw a bunch of stuff that people were saying were callbacks, like when he's riding in the cop car in the back seat with his head up against the window. J- callback to Heath Ledger's Joker, yep. Yeah, Heath Ledger hanging out of the car. Um, and there were some other things that I can't think of at this moment. But it was like the slightest. It wasn't like it It was all up in your face with it. It was just impressive. And DC it's the best film. DC film that, that Warner Brothers has done to date. And uh, they're about to screw it up again next February. So, I um, The one last thing I, I think I need to say about it is I love this interpretation of the character. Um, I think with the Joker, I, I can appreciate all interpretations no matter who the actor is. Because it's always like you're seeing what the Joker thinks he looks like from his own point of view. And because he's a lunatic, that could be a thousand different points of view. So I love that we always get a new character each film. And I just think they did an excellent job yet again. And uh, and I absolutely love it. It's my favorite movie of the year. Way better than Endgame for me. And don't forget, biggest box office opening for an October forever. So it was very successful. I think it took in like $90 million in its first weekend. All right, guys, that's all the time we have today. Remember, this is the highest rated review that we've put out yet. And for more reasons than just being a superhero movie or a comic book movie, we were super pleased with Joaquin Phoenix's performance. And we just can't, you know, rave about this movie enough. We always appreciate you tuning in and listening to us. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube page and, and we'll see you next time. And remember, it's a beautiful day in the cinema hood.